something phenomenal has happened. A big shift has happened where India is now becoming the vision for the world. Anything which India does mm. is done with the perspective of doing global good. Before Copernicus said mm. it, mm. or before Galileo said mm. it, a thousand years before that, Arabat mm. talks about Earth being a gold pin mm. uh, floating in the cosmos. Chandrasekhar got the Nobel Prize when he converted from mm. this country's. Uh, citizenship into an american i mean this country had women who were prime ministers so mm. don't tell that our women were not intelligent and they were not beautiful there is a hypothesis that we exist in time we don't exist in place or location in our spirituality we yeah. say the vishnu was in a slumber and mm. that the brahma is born out of his nabi that brahma is probably the big bang the whole civilization is an error the whole universe <laughs> is an error time is nothing but a myth people came back and said that the future looks pretty different there are drones there is aerial taxis is it all True. We have done time jumps, but the moment you go into other planets, mm. there will be a next level of ex expansion. Then your your primary identity would be a planet. So it'll be like, oh, Martians will have their own law. The Earth will have its own laws. China is known to have created um, own a sun. Recreating fusion power mm. is not a problem. Controlling it is a problem, which nobody mm. has been able to. Do. There is a theory, um, and now uh, Shrijan, this is coming, going really candid and really to make most of your availability. Uh, there is a hypothesis that speaks about we uh, we exist in time. We don't exist in place or uh, a location. We exist in time. We talk about parallel worlds. I would definitely like to know from you uh, what does it mean when we say we exist in time. See, parallel worlds. Uh, you mean parallel universes? Yes. Right. So parallel universes is a is a theory which is slightly different from the space time hmm. fabric which you're talking. Yes. About. So yes. But they are sort of connected because everything has to be connected in hmm. the end. Parallel universe theory has multiple origins. One of them is that when the universe was born, mm. there was so the, what was the universe? Universe was on a point an mm. energy, mm. right? Shakti. Shakti. On a single point. Yeah. Point is infinitesimally small. It's mm. nothing. It has mm. no volume. Mm. It has no mass. It has only one thing, which is energy. Mm. And this energy was in a constant state of converting into matter antimatter, mm. antimatter matter colliding, mm. making the energy back. It was like a Mm. like this but there's no time yet mm. time has stopped mm. the brahma has not awakened yet okay. right so you know in in our spirituality we yeah. say the vishnu was in a slumber yeah and mm. the brahma is born out of his nabi right, right right so that brahma is probably the big bang right okay so what happened in the big bang mm. which and we don't know how mm. there was slight excess of matter over antimatter mm. uh, to the range of i think 1 in 10 million particles okay mm. so you are essentially the entire our entire universe is made of that excess matter mm. over antimatter which was 1 in every 10 million particles mm. right so that little error mm. <laughs> that we're, little error we are all born out of an error, <laughs> error. a calculation mistake so next time you make a calculation <laughs> mistake do realize the whole that civilization is an error <laughs> the whole universe is an error but what happened to that extra mm. so there would be an extra antimatter should I be taking this seriously? <laughs> I am telling you seriously. Like, th th like this is real. Like yeah, this is real. matter out uh, of uh, till, till now, hmm. we have concrete proof to prove it. This okay. is the Big Bang Theory okay. in action. Okay. Where it is now becoming hmm. into more like a hypothesis hmm. is this. So you had you had one extra for, for 10 hmm. million antimatter particles, hmm. you had hmm. 10 million plus one matter particles. Hmm. You got hmm. this one? Hmm. Right? The 10 million, 10 million collided, mm. became back energy, mm. but this one fellow, one fellow. made the universe, mm. right? But how did this one fellow come in? Maybe one went short here. Mm. Maybe this fellow exited somewhere. Yeah. Antimatter. But change so the loop. Be, <laughs> no, that is unlikely. Uh, okay. Because then, mm. then you'll have two extra, yeah, right? right. <laughs> so, because then you'll minus one plus one. So yeah. that's like difference is two. But anyway, that's okay. probably not the theory. Mm. This fellow went somewhere else, mm. this antimatter. Mm. So there's another universe mm. where there's an extra antimatter. Mm. And there was 10 million matter, mm. 10 million plus one mm. antimatter. Which means this universe is entirely born out of this antimatter. Mm. Right? Wow. This universe is mm. perhaps your parallel universe, yes. which runs backward. Everything okay. is ulta. Mm. Mm. So there may be an antimatter universe. Okay. Which is very much in sync with you because you mm. were the same energy. The mm. Shakti was same. Mm. The mm. So that's that's that's, uh, that's the one theory of parallel universes, and if that is the case, then time has no significance. Hmm. Time is is nothing but a myth, hmm. because uh, you the problem is our memory is a function and a slave of time. You hmm. don't remember things which have happened in the future. Right. You only remember things which happened in the past. Hmm. 
maybe there's a species which remembers things which happened in the future mm. and hasn't happened in the past mm. antimatter right. right so by that logic so if and now if you come to the space time fabric mm. the entire cosmos our universe is essentially space mm. and time imagine two axes right, right. this is space mm. x y z every axis mm. it's actually 11 mm. 11 dimensions we we mm. know three yeah. rest we don't the understand we are now beginning to uh, talk and discuss of, yeah it's, it's sort of impossible mm. for a creature like us because yeah. our our consciousness and our body is yes. trapped in three dimensions plus right. time right exactly and this is time mm. right mm. so this is time this is space mm. and you just keep moving at the mm. speed of light in this mm. so if you're moving at the speed of light in space mm. then you're not moving in time that's why mm. time stops when you move okay. at the speed of light okay if you completely Uh, move in space at the speed of uh, no move in time mm. or you don't move in space at all mm. you move very fast in time okay so th- okay. so that is why you are existing in a space time fabric all the time mm. the time is a wrong word here yeah all the while <laughs> all the while so, <laughs> so time is a myth time is a myth time okay. is a myth we <laughs> might be able to disprove it mm. we have done time jumps mm. so humans have b- managed to jump in time mm. uh, we have not done a big jump mm. we've not done a negative jump we've mm. not gone in past mm. but we have an example of people human beings who were in x time mm. and then suddenly jumped time so mm. they didn't go through the usual cycle they jumped time mm. ask me who who people who are in the international space station are going at an astoundingly fast speed okay. right mm. in space right. so they're very fast speed in mm. space mm. which means across time they're not moving as fast mm. so the person who spent the most amount of time in the international space station i think spent 500 days mm. there mm. more than a year mm. that person had gathered mm. so he his time was going slower right mm. so his he had lost a few microseconds mm. then compared to somebody on earth right and the moment he came back to earth mm. he jumped that time to right. match the original time of earth right so that yes. was a time jump yeah. of a microsecond yeah i have seen it in some of the documentaries that i was yeah but so time yeah. jump is possible time jump is possible so is time travel that's a different notion altogether okay. because time travel would require you to go back in time that's mm, yeah. what's exciting that's you the, want to go to the... dinosaurs and, you know <laughs> uh technically it should be possible mm. uh, i mean at, uh, not technically but theoretically in mm. a perfect scenario it should be possible yeah but the only problem would be that what if you tr- start trying to change time mm. so suppose you go back to the and, point uh, at which you were born yeah. or to, to your grandmother and grandfather mm. and you ensure that they don't meet mm. then how were you born right and if you were never born right. then how did you go back in time so it is hypothesis and let it be there or um, uh, wait for 4 500 okay. years ago uh, okay. 4 500 okay. is more, more and i think uh, we should be able to crack so, this so if time travel to uh, past is, is to be kept aside uh you know of course there have been enough and more videos and um, literature um uh, at least some theories and some blacked out papers and um, so called confidential and uh, uh, spoke about time traveling to future where people came back and said that the future uh, looks pretty different there are drones there is aerial taxis and there are hovercrafts people don't walk they are on wave boats elevated is it all true uh, is it possible the, there is a myth or maybe this seems to be new to you too <laughs> No it it is news to me mm. but let's dwell on that news. So you're saying there are people who have claimed to have traveled forward in time mm. and they've also claimed to have came they have come back in time. So yeah. they've done both side travels. Mm. I really want to know how did they manage to do okay. that? Because okay. to open the space time fabric mm. as we know now mm. you need an infinitely large amount of energy. Right. Which is probably only available in black holes. Mm. So black hole is the only mm. sort of body which we know can manipulate time. as of now we mm. know so i think this is more of a figment of imagination <laughs> however i welcome imagination mm. because that is the basis of scientific discovery right but i'm not sure whether you know if you were to make a time leap would you go only like 100 years ahead in time mm. that's like boring i would rather go like a mm. billion years ahead in time and figure mm. out what is the future of the earth mm. i mean how many planets would we be living i mean how would i be concerned if yeah. i could really do time travel i'd not be concerned about these borders mm. all these will evaporate every right. 100 years countries come and go and new countries are born and old mm. countries you know come together and mm. all that i don't think mm. political boundaries is what i'll be interested if i have the that's power a very interesting um, uh, concept that boundaryless world borderless world but it's okay to have um, people running uh, running it as a one single mass 
No, is that the uh, see hmm. eventually when you go to another planet, what will happen? Hmm. Your your passport will change. <laughs> the passport will have another line. You've to gone it. beyond planet. that. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> you have gone to the next yeah, level. Yeah, I mean, if you'll have a passport, there'll be a green hmm. passport for Earth. There'll hmm. be a red passport for Mars. There'll be a white passport oh. for you know Europa, maybe oh. perhaps. Right. Right. And so every time we sort of expand mm. our mm. boundaries, the sizes become bigger. Mm. There would have been a time when in Africa when we mm. were basically earmarking grasslands. Mm. Wale, these mm. trees are mine, those mm. trees are yours. If you yeah. come to my trees, I'll hit you yeah. and so on. Invasion would be mm. that this guy jumps into your right. side of the forest. Right. That does happen in forest today. I mean, yeah. uh, mm. We don't do it, but other mm. species do it. The moment we moved out of Africa, the areas became larger mm. till the point when we said, okay, now we'll build countries, we'll mm. be geopolitical entities mm. and we have countries today and we, we say, okay, if, if some troops from another country come to your country, it's an invasion and you must ward them off and so on. Mm. But the moment you go into other planets, mm. there'll be a next level ex expansion. Then your, your primary identity would be a planet. Mm. So it'll be like, oh, Martians will have their own law. The Earth will have its own laws. Mm. And when you go from Earth to Mars, there'll be mm. a passport check. There'll be a list of things which you can bring, cannot mm. bring, can take, cannot take. Right. And all that will happen. All that and when you go further, solar systems will mm. happen. So you'll go to another solar system. Then, right. you know, maybe you'll go to century, Proxima Centauri. And then mm. you'll say, okay, this is this is solar system. This is Proxima Centauri, different laws. Right. So this is the future. So I, I really right. not concerned Look, about these boundaries. Our uh, Prime Minister, uh, Sri Narendra Modi, I think, something phenomenal has happened. A big shift has happened where India is now becoming the vision for the world. I think we are bringing that vision out which probably we never had earlier. Or the aspiration weren't that um, uh, uh, guided enough to establish the point that we have the capacity and we can bring back that Jagat Guru uh, you know, uh, uh, space for India. And of course, as you rightly said, for the larger good. And that is in our DNA. Uh, you know, uh, we have always perceived world as a larger part of our own family. You know, Vasudev uh, Katumkam, where it comes from. Uh, and you have added the element um, on how our exploration has, uh, has is not just about us, but it has somewhere set some phenomenal benchmarks that space research doesn't need to, uh, you know, uh, gobble billions of dollars which NASA has done. It doesn't need a 25 years project which can be done in 10 years. Uh, the, the first Chandran uh, that happened, it said that, uh, uh, sorry? 2008. 2008. It, it, it was created in a record time, the shortest period of time. It, uh, it took one tenth of the cost to build that up and the cost of travel was less than the um, per, um, the, the rickshaw rate in Bombay so <laughs> per kilometer. Mangalaya. So was Mangalaya. Right? Uh, uh, this is a charisma which is unique to our uh, uh, scientists and yes. then why our scientists are not globally celebrated? Why do we only uh, hear and talk and refer uh, to international uh, forces and uh, thought leaders and scientists? So there's a lot of many questions you've asked. Yes. <laughs> I'll, I'll start with the last one first. Yeah. This is an often asked question. Hmm. Why are int our scientists not celebrated internationally? Because that's how the international community wants us to look at ourselves. Mm -hmm. Why do you think India has never got a Nobel Prize in science or economics or uh, literature? That was my next question Indian too. Indian passport. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Indian passport has not got it. Ravindnath mm -hmm. Gurudev. Yes. Huh? Ravindnath Thakur was, mm -hmm. uh, or a lot of people call him Tagore, mm -hmm. actually Thakur. Uh, he was, Gurudev was the first Asian to win a Nobel Prize. Mm -hmm. C.V. Raman was the first Asian mm. to mm. build a Nobel Prize in any science. Yeah, right. They were both British and, Indians. Yeah, right. right? Mm. There's a person mm. we have all heard of, uh, Chandrasekhar. Of course. Chandrasekhar mm. Limit is there. Mm. Chandrasekhar wrote a paper mm. on black holes, yes. on actually how big mm. stars collapse mm. at the age of 19. Mm. One nine. Yes. What we were doing at one nine, we were barely into college, we were sort of figuring mm. out yeah. life. <laughs> And the person wrote a paper on this mm. published paper mm. at the age of 19 yeah. in 1932. Mm. And in 1939, mm. Oppenheimer basically took elements from his paper and worked on it. Yeah. Not that he cheated, mm. but he worked on that. And the Oppenheimer movie, what does it show? Yeah. Oppenheimer discovered black holes. Yeah. There's some phenomenal work on black holes. Chandrasekhar mm. is not mentioned. Ouch. He's an Indian. 
they did many. Today I'm talking about uh, this year, God. right? You should strongly object to that. <laughs> yeah, so that's that's what we should right. do. Hmm. And then Oppenheimer is credited, and then hmm. said, "Oh no, no, now he started working on the nuclear power hmm. and all that stuff." Right. Bosons, hmm. which is the basis of all forces and hmm. how they communicate, is named after Bose. Bose. Our boss. Our boss. I'm glad that you brought that right. point. I recently read that. Yeah. So yeah. yeah. So uh-huh. it's our boss hmm. who's done it. Hmm. Didn't get a Nobel Prize. Didn't get a Nobel. Prize. Didn't even get a Nobel. Einstein got the Nobel Prize. He didn't get it. Seriously. Right. Hmm. And Chandrasekhar hmm. got the Nobel Prize when he converted from hmm. this country's uh, citizenship hmm. into an American. Hmm. He was a British Indian, then hmm. an Indian, then an American. When he went to become an American, he got the Nobel Prize for the work hmm. he did in 1932. Hmm. So our work is mm. not going to get a Nobel Prize. We'll use that work, mm. but unless the person changes his citizenship or her citizenship, they'll mm. not give the Nobel Prize. Mm. So stop chasing this Nobel Prize. It's a farce. Right. They'll never give you until mm. until we become impossible to ignore. Aren't we? We are reaching that stage. Yeah. I mean, in 1991, when the market opened up and the mm. economy started booming, what mm. happened? Mm. Two Indian girls mm. got Miss World and Miss Universe mm. in the same year. Mm. So yes. what are you trying to say? Yeah. Before that, Indian women were not, not beautiful. that's beautiful <laughs> and smart were, and intelligent. Yeah, yeah. It's a mix of everything. Yes. They were. I mean, this country had uh, women who were prime ministers. So mm. don't tell that our women were not intelligent mm. and they were not beautiful. Yeah. They were everything, right? Mm. But it took the market forces to force them mm. to give us the title. And ever since then, we've been getting it. Mm. So one day, mm. and that day is not far away, when we would be so big that will be impossible to ignore. Even mm. till Chandrayaan 3 happened, mm. we were a, 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 an object of ridicule. You know, people mm. said, oh, Indians just use these rockets mm. which are one-tenth our capacity or mm. one, one-sixth our mm. capacity and they have this mission of Chandrayaan, they'll never be able to land because our our, our Bahubali rockets are mm. one-sixth of their mm. Falcon 9s, as mm. I told you. But we managed to do mm. it. Today, you cannot ignore India in space. Mm. Every foreign channel is talking about it mm. today. I mean, it's also Indian channels. Foreign channels are talking about it. The same thing will happen one day in science and that day is not far away. And then right. you'll start getting a barrage of Nobel Prizes. Right. And that day will happen. But we will stand mm. on the shoulders of those great giants like Meghnath Saha, like J.C. Bose, like, mm. uh, you know, so many others who have mm. done so much and were never recognized. Absolutely. But we must recognize them. I think India India needs to give, at our level, we should give a lot of Bharat Ratnas to a lot of our scientists. That is something which we should do. We did right. give. Right. CNR mm. uh, Rao was there, Dr. Mm. Kalam was there, mm. I think a few others were there right. who have got significantly higher awards. Uh, they are Bharat Ratnas, but right. there are others who've got Padma Vibhushans. Right. We do recognize, and I think we should do more. I think someone like the ISRO director yes. who started it, Madhavan Nair, Chandrayaan 1, yeah. uh, someone like uh, our uh, mm. Sivan, mm. and someone like the current ISRO mm. chairperson. Yes. All these people deserve the highest or you know that level of uh, mm. civilian awards. But don't chase Nobel Prizes. And you know how it began is that there's a person called Lord Macaulay mm. who was sent in the early 18th, 19th mm. century mm. to India mm. with the objective to make India into better slaves. Mm. So, you know, there's this saying that, mm. uh, you know, in body they should be Indians, mm. but in their heart they should mm. be Brits. Mm. They should respect the queen, mm. long live the queen or the king, whoever, right. and they should become great <laughs> slaves. And Lord Macaulay was sent here to revamp that using education. Mm. And he was the first person who transformed India's education. And he rewrote a lot mm. of our history. And his his own mm. quote is that the entire Vedic wealth of India, the knowledge, mm. is less than, if you add mm. them together, is less than the value of a single shelf in a village library of England. Mm. So unka ek shelf mm. is better than our entire Vedic knowledge. Mm. That is what was taught to us in 19th century. Yeah, but that the, is what is taught to us in 20th century. Hmm. I read hmm. things like Johar Pratha, hmm. revamped India, made it safer. What kind of a knowledge is this? Hmm. The guy is the looter in chief. Hmm. You can't call him a benevolent hmm. dictator hmm. of a foreign power. Hmm. And we were taught this. I was taught this. Hmm. I don't know. Do you know the full name of Hemu? No. Who was Hemu? No. Second Battle of Panipat, Akbar okay. defeated him. Okay, my history teacher was very 1526. bad. 1526. <laughs> Hemu is Vikramaditya. And huh. his name huh. is reduced to Hemu. Himendra Vikramaditya Himendra. is remained to Hemu. Hemu. Why? Because uh, you wanted to insult hmm. him. You want to make him like a little, small little thing right. in history. Right. But he was a great king. Right. 
defeated by the Afghans. Right. I think you brought a very interesting point once again is about the education system and how Britishers actually. Uh, I would say that somewhere there's a lot of manipulation that took place, and especially on the uh, on on the lines of introducing a language that disconnected us from uh, us uh, our roots. We were written with history. Right. More than the language, our history was completely completely re-written. changed. Right, because what they had in their libraries on on shelf was a hoarded and they collected or um, looted. Uh, uh, in you know. Uh, oh, they burned uh, people because they said the earth was not flat. Exactly. They burned because they said uh, that the earth was uh, not the center of the universe. Bruno fact, was burned for that. Right. We didn't do that. Arabat a thousand years ago before. Hmm. Copernicus said mm-hmm. it, or mm-hmm. before Galileo said mm-hmm. it, a thousand years before that, Arabat Arabatica mm-hmm. talks about Earth of being course. a gold pin, mm-hmm. uh, floating in the cosmos with right. among other many many gold pins. Absolutely, you know the, the we can take up the entire sense of the astrology itself. Uh, you know, we 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 spoke about you know we there is enough more literature uh, in our Vedas and Shastras about Absolutely. the the a lot of it is very very accurate. Extreme, you know, mm-hmm. a- accurate is d- uh, definitely accurate. Mm-hmm.